everybody. Thanks for being here. I have an awesome vegan in the house, literally. Kathy Freston is here. Aww. New Thank York you. Times best-selling author. Thanks for being with me. Thanks for having me. Super fun. We're in my house. We're talking about all sorts of great stuff, like her books. Uh, so I think everybody probably knows you, best-selling author. You were on Oprah. I mean, mm. you've really hit the mainstream, which I love about mm. what you do. Um, but maybe you could tell everybody how and why you went vegan. Oh my gosh. Um, there's there's multiple factors. I would say it's it's probably. I'm not one of those people, unfortunately, who heard something and just jumped on it. Uh, uh -huh. I I needed to hear it and sense it and feel it and digest it. And it, for whatever reason, it took me, um, I remember in my early 20s, I was macrobiotic for health reasons. Mm. And I would open up John Robbins book, Diet for a New America, and I would quickly close it because it was so upsetting. I was like, oh, this was shaking up my world. So I would close it. I clearly wasn't ready. My consciousness wasn't ready. Yeah. Um, my emotional maturity wasn't ready. Um, so years went by and I had been writing and teaching meditation classes on becoming more awake and aware and conscious. And it occurred to me that I had no awareness around my food other than the health mm -hmm. aspect of it. Like mm -hmm. I shouldn't eat sugar or, you know, needed a lot of protein or whatever it was. So I thought I want to lift up the trunk and, or lift up the hood and look underneath at the engine of the food mm -hmm. market and how my food gets to my plate. Because otherwise I thought I'm going to be mm -hmm. a hypocrite if I don't pay attention. So I had this in my mind and simultaneously an organization sent me a pamphlet on an, an, a food animal being dragged to slaughter. And I believe it was a dairy cow. Mm -hmm. And it was so jarring. It's, it's so interesting because I'm, I'm so split on those images. If they're effective right. or yes. not effective, mm -hmm. like do I can, condone that or does it traumatize people mm -hmm. and it pushed me forward mm -hmm. so it was effective for you for mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. I think for other people it might be like I, I can't see this and they just shut down everything but anyway so I I saw this image and it was so jarring mm -hmm. and shortly thereafter I was playing with my little dog Lotsi and she was on her back and, you know, her legs were just moving. How, you know, when she gets yes, the belly rub. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> She's a little chihuahua. Yeah, oh, sweet. And uh, I started looking at her and I thought, I love this animal so much. And a little voice in my head said, well, if you love animals so much, why are you, why are you eating them? Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. And I started putting her in, um, in my mind, a thought experiment in a slaughterhouse. And oh, just, God. you know, when you leave your animal and they're, and they're upset because you go to the grocery store, right, it's traumatizing. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. I can't leave her. I can't go grocery I, shopping. Yeah. I have a chihuahua. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Can you come to my house? Uh, so, you know, so the idea of being okay with her in an enclosure or lined up and being scooted forward for slaughter or God forbid the, pro you know, the actual moment of killing. I thought this is so effed up mm -hmm. and so deeply wrong mm -hmm. on such a core level of my humanity, the cultural humanity, and what the hell do I do? Oh, so then you, you wanted to do something, but you didn't know how. What do I do? Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't not eat animal mm -hmm. foods because mm -hmm. I need my protein. Oh boy. So a conversation <laughs> we're going to have. Yeah. And, uh, I, I mean, everything I ate was eggs for breakfast yes. and, uh, you know, chicken salad for lunch. I mm -hmm. love tuna sandwiches. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I was a good person, you know, I was not a bad person. I was not someone who was walking around selfish and asleep. Well, I guess I was <laughs> selfish and asleep, but I, 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 it was just like rocking my world. So instead of, I think what I would have done is shut down and said, I, I just can't deal with it. But I said to myself, I'm just going to point myself in that direction 
and I'm going to lean into it. And I'm going to be easy on myself because I really am clueless and I'll probably die younger <laughs> because I, I am, won't be getting protein. I won't be getting protein <laughs> and I'll probably gain a lot of weight because <laughs> I'll be eating carbs. <laughs> yeah. And I won't have any energy. Uh, because I'm a tree hugger. I don't, yeah. I don't know what to say yeah, about well, that. Because, you know, carbs are sugar and sugar <laughs> yes. makes you tired. So I was really like, okay, but I, I, I'm just going to push myself into this anyway. So I did. And I started just getting curious, mm. just went at it with a curiosity, like, well, what does one eat? And, um, you know, starting to look at menus differently and restaurant choices differently. And then I, I went to, um, grocery stores, with the spirit of adventure oh, fun. rather than, oh, I can't eat this, I can't eat that or right. whatever. I would instead go like, oh, what are these sections and what can I get? And what's, what's the protein on this? And then, oh, you know, fun. all of this, it, all of this fun stuff. So I just literally leaned into it mm -hmm. and little by little, I, um, I became vegan. And I remember a friend of mine, we sat at lunch. Actually, she was a member of an organization and we sat at lunch and I said to her, just so you know, I'm never giving up fish. So don't even try because I love fish and it's part of my life and everything. And she said, I, okay. She said, I mean, as long as you know, it was like, and she was the perfect activist. She was like, okay. And I'm sure, you know, no X, pressure. Y, and Z. And then I was like, oh, I didn't know X, Y, and Z, you know? And then I found out about Derek. It, it was, it was good that I got it bit by, by bit, bit by bit, you know? Well, and I, I love that, you know, don't let perfection be the enemy of good. So yes. you just, Yes. made any step and progress that you yes. could make, yes. that you were ready to make, that you could process, that you mm -hmm. could understand. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious, as you, because you've gone now across the country promoting your books and talking to people about the lean, because that's what you did, is you leaned into it, so that's one of your books, mm -hmm. but also about veganists. I'll just, a little show and tell here. So this is one of her books about, can you see that, veganist? And then also the book of veganish, mm -hmm. which is sort of your... I'm huge paraphrasing here, but mm. you're doing your best effort to change what you can. And yes. every day you do a little bit more and yes. you do a little bit better. Yes. And like you said, don't let perfection get in the way of good. Right. So if everyone were vegan-ish, we'd have a lot better world oh my word. than people who are just aiming for perfection or nothing. Yes. So. And I don't understand where this idea of black and white, all or nothing really came from. I mean, I, it doesn't exist anywhere else in my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, it's a no-brainer. It's not hard. I, I gave everything up, and that's mm -hmm. the end of it. So Amazing. it's no big deal for me. Yeah. But, you know, I don't approach anything in my life that it's all or nothing. Mm -hmm. And if I can't do it 100%, I'm not going to do it at all. Mm -hmm. I don't approach anything like that. So mm -hmm. it's strange that with this particular topic, a lot mm -hmm. of people, I get the question of like, well, I'm afraid that I won't be able to do it, so I won't try. I get well, that a lot. because it's so ingrained in our lives. Daunting. That it's daunting. And, and let's be honest, because for years I used to tell people, oh, it's easy. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. It's just... And it's, it's not for a lot of people. That's right. You know, yeah. if you don't live on the coast or in a big city or you're traveling, you know, other countries, it is not easy. I, I've traveled in this country. I'm from Georgia. Mm. And going home to Georgia, it was not easy. I yeah. did not eat well. So you have to be really committed mm -hmm. and really sort of um, industrious about finding places. And so once you give yourself the permission, I'm, I'm going to screw up. I'm not going to do this perfectly. And um, I may not always have a great meal. And mm -hmm. it may not be right. the healthiest meal. Right. It right. might be a burger at TGI Fridays, you know, and that's okay. That's mm -hmm. okay. Uh -huh. um, yes, I think we all do better when we just encourage. And I mm -hmm. think most people mm -hmm. in the vegan world feel the same. Don't mm -hmm. you? That we just want to bring people along. I know every once in a while people are always say like, but I know there's that one guy or there's that one girl who's like really mm -hmm. hardcore. Mm -hmm. I don't know many of those people actually. It's because it's, it's really changed. I really yeah. don't think that it was as flexible as it mm. was um, and utilitarian as it is now uh, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, I think right. that the, now people are getting like, let's look at this in numbers. 
in terms of animals spared right. okay. versus, you know, or units of suffering. Let, let's look at this in a very straightforward and rational way. And a lot more animals are spared if we give people the space to, to lean into it. Yes, I completely agree. And we're seeing some wonderful innovations. So mm -hmm. there's a company called, oh my gosh, the Better Meat Company. Have you heard oh, of them? No. No. Okay. No. So what they are are plant-based fillers mm. that can blend with meat, mm -hmm. and I'm probably going to get this wrong. I will mm -hmm. double check it and get back to everybody later because there's, as I understand it, no regulation about mm. how much meat needs to be in something like a hot dog. Mm. So this is a way of Push getting that plant stuff out. Right, right, exactly right. So I think they can go up to seventy percent of right. plant-based stuff. So it's mm -hmm. not a hundred percent plant-based mm -hmm. hot dog, yeah. but it's going to taste like meat. It's going to be yeah. sold as meat. Yeah, but it's going to have plant filler so yeah, yeah. Like, innovations like that are coming to as you say totally make room for better yeah, not because yeah. we're looking for 100 percent, but we're yeah. just looking for anything that's yeah, progress I'll exactly take. and you're crowding out not cutting out so that's you're right. saying yes i'm not going to cut out my hot dog but i'm going to crowd out the crap in there right and then hopefully people become more aware like well, i mean i could just eat a you know, Might as well just, veggie dog, that's right. why not? Might as well just mean, have Beyond Sausage yeah, or Topher, exactly. I mean, at the end. So, exactly. yes, and then it starts to get, as um, vegan companies get more and more mm -hmm. money, yeah. they start to scale up, they, yes. the price comes down, yes. and it, it's, you know, you're shopping and you're like, well, I might as well just have Tofurky instead, it's the totally, same price or totally. whatever. So The market changes everything. <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I will say I was in New Orleans um this past weekend, oh my God, I don't know if you guys have been there during French Quarter Fest. But oh my it was, word, it was madness. Insane, yeah. it yeah. was insane. And I looked around and I thought, you know, a lot of these people aren't going to be persuaded by ethics. They're just not. And yeah. a lot of these people are not going to be persuaded by health. They're just not. Mm. So mm. the change really does, you know, there's, there's, there's the piece that ethics does appeal to some people. It appeals to me, probably appeals yes. to you. Yes, definitely. Health appeals to some people, yes. but not others. Right. But the market drives so much of a change. So when you have these incredible entrepreneurs like Ethan yes. Brown and Pat Brown yeah. and, you know, the Hungry Planet people, they, they're they supplying such good substitutes yes. that that's going to really drive the market to shift. Yeah. And I think so. Actually, your co-author on Clean Protein, which is another book, your most mm -hmm. recent book that you have out, Bruce Friedrich, mm -hmm. is the uh, director of the Good Food Institute. Mm -hmm. And they always say it comes down to taste, convenience, and price. Exactly. Because most people have two jobs, three kids kids that are running around, right. they really can't analyze all this stuff like That's we do. Right. Mm -hmm. So no one's got that kind of time. And it does take some mental bandwidth mm -hmm. to be like, okay, I guess I'm not eating meat now mm -hmm. because it's everywhere. And particularly mm -hmm. cheese, people are daunted by that because it's on everything. It's in everything. Mm -hmm. So I think most people are just looking for what's easy yes. and what's accessible yes. and what's affordable. Yeah. So that's why the market is so important right. to see all these new players coming in right. because it's going to change right. how people shop. And yeah. that's really what we're after. I agree. I agree. So I want it to be convenient, tasty. As well, <laughs> right. Yes, yes, me too. Yes, exactly. I'll take it. Yeah. But when as you travel the country, mm. what is the the hurdle that you see most people have, mm -hmm. and what has been the most successful either tip or entryway into talking to others about trying mm -hmm. and tempting veganism? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say uh, the the most uh, difficult hurdle to overcome is someone's belief that this is. Uh. Uh, a, a good road to take. And it is shocking how much misinformation is yes, out there. Yes. Um, I don't understand actually how certain doctors uh, or nutritionists or whatever are not held legally accountable for the bad advice they give. I don't understand how food companies mm -hmm. who are pushing certain foods are not held legally accountable. And I think that so many people are so confused by what they should eat, what they what's healthy for them. So that's mm -hmm. the biggest hurdle. Like, but what what about lectins? I heard mm -hmm. lectins are really bad, and beans are really bad for you. And I heard, I heard oh soy is just causes breast cancer. Oh and it's like mm -hmm. this is real misinformation that has taken hold. It's intentional misinformation, mm, yeah. I think. And the USDA does nothing really to stop this misinformation. No, it's all so. they're all in cahoots. And I, Yes. Don't want to sound like a, you know, um, conspiracy, conspiracy theorist. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm definitely not, but 
it's kind of, it's capitalism gone awry basically mm-hmm. and it's and it's our government and it's you know we just have to be investigators ourselves and and most people don't like you said have time to be an investigator yes it's they, so much work or the resources and most studies academic studies do not have access like you're not le- you know you can't have access to the study so right. you're reading someone else's interpretation of it it's yeah. it is hard you know yes. it's really hard so um, that's the, the, the biggest hurdle, I think. And then, um, then the availability and all of that stuff. Yes. But I think what's happening now is there are so many awesome vegans. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's so many incredible uh, athletes and right. actresses and actors and... and Politicians. Uh, yeah, yeah, really smart people. Entrepreneurs, that, yeah. Entrepreneurs that I think it's starting to be like, okay, they might... They, I'm sure they researched it, yes, right? Right. I'm sure they put some time into it, and uh, so so it's it's shifting. Yeah, it's kind of like a Malcolm Gladwell tipping point. Yeah, I sort of feel that we're getting close to this yeah. tipping point. In fact, so I was on KFI mm-hmm. here in Los Angeles, the Fork Report, and I mm-hmm. was super happy about this. I love you, the Fork Report. Thank you for having me. It's a food show, uh-huh. and they had the kickoff of grilling season, and so they have oh. all these meat grillers. Oh right, and they invited me to represent vegans. So I went on the radio show and I did all of the grilling of portobello mushrooms Mm. and Beyond Sausage. Mm. Uh, Shout out to Beyond Meat. And so we did this in, do you know where San Dimas is? Mm Mm-hmm. So we were in San Dimas, which is not L.A. at all. Mm-hmm. It's it's actually worlds away, mm-hmm. not just because it's an hour away, but because of the way people mm-hmm. think and, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's not in the L.A. bubble. And so most people, because it was live, there mm-hmm. was people in the audience, most people had never heard of Beyond mm-hmm. Meat, which maybe might sound shocking here. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was really sort of crediting you in my mind because I knew that we had this interview coming mm-hmm. up when somebody walked up to me and they said, oh, I think I heard that vegan stuff is better for you, mm-hmm. right? Maybe mm-hmm. I should try this. Mm-hmm. So I got rid of all my my sausages. I mean, Yay. I was amazed how many people wanted yeah. to try it. And they were saying things like, I think it's supposed to be better for me, right? Yeah. And so I, I credit that to somebody like you who's oh. been talking about this well, for and so there's, long. Thank you. And there's so many people that have, you know, were strengthening this chorus of voices that are saying, yeah, it's actually really healthier. And the people who are super healthy, I want to be like, chill out, man. You know, it's like, okay, it's yeah, a little process. It's got some oil in it, but Let's chill move out. On. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Move on. Because these people are going to eat it, you know, no matter what, the sausage. I don't know if you know, I have a McDonald's petition. Yes, I do know. Please tell everybody going about on. that. So yeah. go to change.org. Uh, I think it's called Kathy. Kathy, Fr- we want a McDonald's veggie burger, please. Yes change.org. So if you just, I think, Google my name and McDonald's, McDonald's. it'll come up. But um, so we have, I think, 165,000 signatures. Oh, fantastic. And there's really been an uptick, uh, an uptick lately because a lot of people before were like, I wouldn't go in there no matter what. And I, I, I'm saying, you know, guess what? The people who are going to McDonald's are going to go to McDonald's. McDonald's no matter what No happens. matter what. So They're going to get well, yeah. a burger no matter what. Yeah. So would you rather have it be an animal-based burger or a plant-based burger? By the way, I'm, I'm trying to use the word animal-based more and more because oh, I, like I, I think it's really important to clarify when someone says, I'll, if someone were to say, would you prefer the plant-based or the animal-based? Yes. It forces someone to take a minute and oh, I say, love that. Mm-hmm, I'm stealing that. To steal it. Uh, it forces someone to say, I'll take the animal-based burger. And then it's like, okay, yeah. like, what kind of psycho are you? <laughs> yeah, it's like, what's wrong with you? I mean, yes. why are yeah. you insisting on an animal-based burger yeah. if you can have a plant-based? And it pretty much Taste. is indistinguishable. Right. Yeah. So, Particularly with, shout out to Impossible Foods, mm-hmm. particularly with the Impossible Whopper. Mm-hmm. It isn't, and I don't know if you saw this in The Guardian, it is indistinguishable. The Eric Bowles, who's the director of public relations for mm-hmm. the Missouri Farm Bureau... Yeah. Said that he wanted to know what his clients were up against. Mm -hmm. So the Whopper is uh, being tested in St. Louis in Missouri. So he walked into a Burger King. He ordered the Impossible Burger and he said, my clients better wake up because Mm -hmm. this is competition. I can't tell the difference. And if I didn't know I had specifically ordered something that Mm -hmm. wasn't me, I wouldn't know. And so I thought, wow, the Farm Bureau is saying it's the same. It's so amazing. And the financial market is starting to wake up too. It's very exciting. You know, Jeremy Collar, who's uh, uh, an investor a super uh, successful investor uh, in the UK is making sure that 
his clients and his people oh. and companies know that this is a risk. This is a financial risk to invest in animal agriculture. Oh, I like that. Because climate change is changing how crops do with the weather. That's right. Uh, there's all kinds of pathogens that, you know, ruin their products. Salmonella, mm. E. coli, there's all kinds of, you know, responsibility. Um, and it's a super inefficient way of Completely creating inefficient. protein, but it's a big risk. And I think that once um, companies and financial advisors, because that is the power, mm -hmm. that's the power, when they realize like, God, there's a lot that goes into this animal agriculture right. and right. it is just not paying off, especially with everything going on. And here you've got this stuff that's being prepared in a perfectly safe environment that's super clean. You know, that's clean protein. It's clean, no pathogens, no E. coli, salmonella, campylobacter. Mm -hmm. It's clean on the environment because you're not creating all this methane and CO2 by chopping down rainforest to, you know, uh, create grazing ground or raising crops to feed livestock. Um, so it's clean on the environment. It's clean on your body. doesn't have the cholesterol, has far less saturated fat. And it's clean on your conscious. Mm -hmm. Conscious. That is clean protein. Mm -hmm. And I think that that more companies, obviously Beyond Meat and Impossible and all those people, they, they get it, they live it, they're driving this thing. But I think the mainstream old school companies are starting to get it. And if they don't get it, it's... I mean, they're, they're going to be left behind. Yes, I think Tyson is getting on board. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm a fan of Tyson, but just to show you like how mainstream it's becoming. Because yeah. as you say, it's a financial risk if you're not going to be in the plant-based arena. Yeah. If you're going to stick with just animal agriculture, yeah. there's a huge risk to that. Because you're just, just we don't have the resources really to further this situation. Animals are completely inefficient mechanisms for turning around protein. Mm -hmm. So you have to give it nine calories. I'm speaking of a cow. You give it nine calories to churn out one calorie of mm -hmm. meat mm -hmm. that you're eating, of food. Mm -hmm. So incredibly inefficient. So when you have this other system that uses less land, uses less water, puts out fewer greenhouse gas emissions, it's just such a better business equation mm -hmm. that from a business standpoint, it's not a great decision exactly. to be in animal agriculture. Exactly. So as plant-based scales up, it's where you'd want to shift your money. Totally. And as that's happening, the market is younger. You know, yes. kids are sort of maturing and starting their families. They've seen this stuff online, how slaughter happens. They see climate right. change. You know, they're educated on this stuff. And they're shifting at the same time, so. Yeah, so I shout out to all the millennials whom I love and to social media because I think social media has had an enormous impact. Yeah. Just bringing awareness to people. It's very hard, I think, in today's mm -hmm. age. Now, granted, I do, I'm in the Chicago bubble, so, you know, maybe I've got this wrong, but it's very hard to say I'm unaware, one is unaware of the mm -hmm. horrors of factory mm -hmm. farming. Mm -hmm. I think... Everybody kind of knows. Would you say that that's? I think right? everybody kind of knows. Not everybody's touched Cares, by it. Cares, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So the biggest hurdle you see is misinformation. Misinformation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So well, we're on it. That's what we're here to do, and that's what <laughs> veganist and clean protein. Her uh, book with Bruce. Um, by the way, say hello to Bruce. I, will. I love him. I, I love will. Bruce. I do too. Yes. I do too. So then, knowledgeable. And clean protein came about. The book with uh, with Bruce called Clean Protein. Uh, we were out at dinner. He was in town for some business. And I said, I think you should write a book oh. about clean protein. And he was like, great idea. You Let's do me. it. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. No, no, no. no. To you. I don't want to do that. <laughs> just no, you do it. Yeah, you do it. <laughs> so he was like, I'm not doing it without you. So uh, oh. we did it together. And he's so brilliant. Yes. And it was just such an honor to work with him. And um yeah, and he's doing great stuff with, with Good Food Institute. Yeah, he is. So in honor of Good Food Institute, I will rattle off a bunch of statistics that come directly from Good Food Institute. So uh, let's see. 2018 over 2017, plant-based foods are up 17%. Plant-based meat specifically is up 23%. Mm. Menu penetration across the United States, so that means how many menus have vegan items, 11.2%. And uh, Grubhub, now this is a stat from 2017. We don't even have 2018 yet, which maybe they do by now, but at least I didn't get it. Uh, in 2017, plant-based orders on Grubhub were up 19%. 
That's amazing. So there's some great things going on in GFI, Good Food Institute tracks yeah. all of this, which is so great. McDonald's, so. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> what's up? Come on. You are being left behind. Get with the program. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And I, they are coming out with something soon, aren't they? Because in other countries, they have in other a countries McVegan, they have, yeah. I think. But yeah. they're dragging their feet, and we just want to push them over the yes. edge because they are the largest just consumer right. of beef right. like cows yes i mean you go to the website they will proudly tell you every minute this is how many cows Ew. go to the beef like that's a point of pride for them uh, yeah i'm like wow, wow that's effed up that's it effed is effed up, up. Yeah, it's really up. Yeah. It's crazy i want to give a shout out to my friend because if you love cows you have to uh, go to jennifer leifer's um instagram feed because uh she has a farm in arkansas and these cows Will never be slaughtered. It, it, she's. I won't tell her story because it's her te- her story to tell. But if you want to feel good, yes. if you want to look at some cows mm-hmm. and the way they should live, and how they're clicking up their feet, their, mm-hmm. their feet, they <laughs> their hands and their feet, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Mm-hmm. It's really great. She and I are Instagram friends, pals. So I will also say shout out to Jennifer mm-hmm. uh, and what she's doing in Arkansas. She and her husband, and it's yeah. just a wonderful story again, hers to tell. But. Uh, People get it in Arkansas. It's yeah. not just L.A. or Chicago right. or New York. So it is spreading. I'll say kind of a fun story. I was in Chicago in a suburb, like an hour outside of the city. And I got the menu and I was like, oh, come on. So I always make it a point to voice my preference. So I said to this server, you know, so what, what you got for me that's vegan? And he said, hold on, I'll get you the vegan menu. Yeah, it's so great. But by the way, why don't they put the vegan menu down right Mm. away? Because I think most people would who are like meh and whatever, they're not they're you ask because you're vegan, but maybe someone who sits down who's not vegan and they have a vegan menu, I think it should all be part of one menu and it's a section that's vegan. It's like, oh, I'll try that. Yeah. You know That sounds good. That sounds really good. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's definitely changing, but it could be a little bit better. And I think you brought up such an important thing. I think a great part of activism is to be asking because that's the market and that people listen to their customers. And so every time you get on a flight, say, do you guys have any soy milk or almond milk? Right. And um, what is your vegan protein? Because I don't want a side of like vegetables that's left over from the chicken dish. You right. know what I mean? Yes. So, uh, but every time you're in a Starbucks, say, when are you guys going to have a vegan muffin or a vegan croissant? Every time you're anywhere, mm-hmm. say, this. what do you have that's vegan? And it's like, it just gets out it, there. It, We're connected. We're the, the level of connectivity, you'd be surprised. It just reverberates out. And the right people hear it, and it just creates more of a ripple effect. The strongest tool you could ever have in your toolbox is your own voice. Mm -hmm. So using your own voice is Mm -hmm. so truly powerful. And you never know if you're going to be the one who, like, is the light bulb moment for somebody else because you brought it up. So Mm -hmm. you just never know. And it's so empowering to... One, be your own best advocate. So Mm -hmm. if you're waiting for the government to tell you what's healthy or not, God help you, you know, because they just don't really have your interests. So Mm -hmm. for you advocating for yourself, that's Mm -hmm. the most empowered you're ever going to feel. And I always say that if we're frustrated with politics, whether you're Republican or Democrat, doesn't really matter. I think all sides are just flustered. Mm -hmm. Uh, You actually, not just on election day, you have the power three times a day, every time you vote with your wallet, because Mm -hmm. really what matters, I mean, voting matters, don't get me wrong. But but what yes. affects people change is the dollars and the ka totally. And when you vote with your dollars, when you get plant-based stuff, breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever, when you're out, when you're mm-hmm. asking for these things, mm-hmm. that's when real change happens. Totally. It follows the money. So mm-hmm. use your voice. It's the strongest tool you'll ever and have. To- I so agree. And let the restaurateurs know that where, you know, if you're at your local restaurants, just say to the manager, do you know there's something called a veto vote? And so the veto vote is, say there are four or six of us going to dinner and one of us is vegan. If that menu at that restaurant doesn't have at least one or two good, you know, protein centric meals. The reason I say protein centric is because I I just don't want a side of, you know, uh, vegetables or, 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 you know, a salad or something. That's why I'm saying like, you know, you a want a real beyond or yes, tofu right. mm-hmm. or some chickpeas, a chickpea patty or something like that. And so just say, if there's one person in that party 
the group will veto that restaurant. Even though five people are not vegan right. and that one person is, they're going to go to a restaurant where everybody can be happy. Mm -hmm. And you better believe that that restaurateur is going to be like, I just oh. lost out on six people. Yeah, That's exactly. People. Yeah. Exactly. So, well, so I have another question for you. Do you think we are beyond the point of no return? And maybe what I mean more specifically is, so you were on Oprah. Mm -hmm. Well, how long ago was that now? Maybe 10 years? Or? No, it was, no. Uh, I was on her last season as well. So her last season was, was what, like, six years ago? Yeah, something like this. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. So when I saw you on Oprah, I was like, oh, go get it, girl, go get it. Uh, I sort of thought, Oprah, all right. Mm -hmm. From here on out, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. But we sort of made a step up and then it, mm -hmm. it, I mean, I guess business wasn't ready. We didn't have the entrepreneurs that we have mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Is there any risk of this being a fad? People doing it because it's on social media and, um, you know, they're doing it for their health. But in mm -hmm. three years, a different study could come out that says smoking no, is good for you again I don't or whatever. think there's a risk of a fad because there's no. too much substantial information and there's too much substantial change. Okay. And, you know, people are getting more and more aware. The studies are becoming you know, better interpreted by incredible doctors like Dr. Garth Davis. I mean, yeah. Dr. Michael Greger, Dr. Neil Barnard. I mean, these, these guys are out there interpreting this stuff for us and for the, you know, wider range of people. So that's so important. What I do find um, to be a big risk is that will we outrun the sort of disaster that we've started with climate change? Uh -huh. You know, and is it and, too late? I mean, I, I don't think it's ever too late, but I'm just saying that I don't think this is a fad, but we need to get on it, you mm -hmm. know? And in most climate change uh, literature, you don't see a lot about... Animal agriculture. Ag animal ag, which is shocking to me because it's the one thing that we can do as individuals other right than now. buy a new car, change our light bulbs, you know, whatever. We can do this like three times a day and make a big difference. So I just hope that we get on it mm -hmm. in such a way that we can substantially, as a culture, everybody just sort of start doing stuff that it makes a big difference that we can outrun that. It's shocking to me because it's misinformation twice now. So misinformation about your health and what you should be eating and misinformation about climate change mm -hmm. and how much animal agriculture impacts mm -hmm. our earth, our environment, climate change. And if you have kids, mm. oh my word, I know. the future, yeah. your kids' future yeah. is dependent on if you're yeah. eating that burger. So, it's, so don't do it's it. crazy. Yes. No, it's really crazy. It's And there's so much responsibility that we have ourselves. And yes. that's empowering. That is empowering. Yeah. Right. right. Therein like, is the joy. You yeah. have the power. Yeah. I think that is we, really We can wonderful. actually do something about this. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so let me ask you one more thing. And, and maybe I'm like repeating myself here. But um, in a nutshell, if what would be your suggestion for those talking to non-vegans? Like what's the mm. best tip you have mm -hmm. for approaching, talking to, mm -hmm. communicating, educating, mm -hmm. depending if they want it, mm -hmm. non-vegans? Mm. Be a great example. I would say that's that's the bi the biggest thing is um, not to say, oh, do you know what the, that came from? That what happened to that chicken on the way to your plate? You just say, oh, I'll have the um, the lentil loaf with uh, a side of Brussels sprouts, <laughs> and you have vitality and you have a good nature about you, and you're warm and you're friendly and you're up to date on things. Trust me. We are, as a human species, we look to each other to take mm. cues. We, we mimic each other. We, you know, we see what's working, whatever. People look to you and say, oh, okay, you know, she feels, she seems like she's got a lot of energy and she's been doing this for 14 years and she hasn't died yet. You know I what I mean? You. And, um, and, uh, and you just do is be the best example that you can. And so, then when someone's curious, you have the information and you know where to send them online and things like that. So another empowering point for you, our wonderful viewers, just living your best life, use an mm -hmm. Oprah reference there, mm -hmm. just living your best life really is convincing to others because ultimately we all want to age well, age backwards maybe even. And of course a plant-based diet is great for that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're just saying be your best, happy, energetic self. Yes. And that's enough. Yes. I always say cook for people if you like to cook. So whenever I that have meat That would not be good for me. <laughs> no, that's not good for you. Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to go my way. <laughs> but, okay, well come to my yeah. house. I'll cook for exactly. you. Exactly. I'll take you out for a burger. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay, so I, at the end of interviews, I have a bunch of questions. These are meant to be sort of off the top of your head, okay. one word answers. Yeah. Some of them are longer than one word, but okay. I'll just start and we'll sort of your first visual reaction. Okay, okay. great. What food are we always going to find in your fridge? Mm, vegan cheese. Ooh, which is mm. your favorite? I love tree line and I love yeah. miyokis. Miyokos. Miyokos. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So wonderful. Mm -hmm. So there is a cheese coming out of Scotland. Mm -hmm. Do you like like French cheeses? That oh, kind yeah. of cheese? Yeah, okay. Totally. There's a cheese coming out of Scotland. Shout out to you. I can't wait for you enough. Like, please hurry it up. Get to Whole Foods. It's called Sheesh. S H E E S H and Oof. outstanding cheeses, Oof. outstanding. And I think you're going to see. We were talking about innovation from like Impossible Foods and mm -hmm. Beyond Meat. I think you're going to see a lot of innovation in the cheese area. Mm. You're going to see things like blue cheese, camembert. We're taking it to bring the next level. On. Yeah, bring it. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty ready here. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so vegan cheese, got it. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite snack? Could be junk food, could be healthy. Oh, interesting. My favorite snack would be snack. Is nuts. I just love yeah, nuts. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of rotate around whether it's uh, Brazil nuts or almonds or a mix or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. you've kind of always got them handy, like Tons. in your purse. Yeah. Yeah, so that's great. Um, okay. You've had a long day, super busy. You don't really like to cook. Mm -hmm. What's the one thing you can do? You walk in your house, you can make it in 10 minutes, you know it's always going to be good. A glass of wine. <laughs> Oh, you really are the non-cook. Okay. <laughs> yes, a glass of wine is always going to be very good. I know. Um, no, okay, but aside from that, uh, so dinner at the end of the day? Yes, whatever, like, whatever. It could be lunch, mm -hmm. too, or whatever. Yeah. You just It's your go-to, super go -to, easy. My yeah. go-to, super easy, which I basically live on, um, is Trader Joe's has these microwavable rice, brown rice, that's already cooked, and you can throw it in the um, microwave. Super and easy. you have like a big helping of that. And then I have beans, which either I make it once a week, you know, or twice a week, or I just get a little can of beans, mm -hmm. rinse that out. And then I get, uh, I always have salad, you know, from Trader Joe's or Whole Foods or something like that. The super greens or arugula yeah. and um, throw in a bunch of vegetables. So it's always for me, rice, bean, salad. Yes. And do you mix them together or do you keep salad on the side and then rice and beans together? Mix it, you just mix it all together. I'd love mm -hmm. to do that too. Yeah. My bowls are huge. Oh. It's like it's like a basketball oh. bowl. Oh, yeah. it's embarrassing. <laughs> oh my god, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so um, well, we probably know the answer to this, but do you have any pets? And most importantly, do you think they're any different than farm animals? I do have a dog named Trixie who has me wrapped around her yeah, little paw. The best. Yeah. She has a bell on the back door that was meant for her to ring the bell, so I knew she had to go out, and now she's just like, bang, bang. you're not paying attention to me. Bang. bang, stop talking to your friend. It's me. Bang. bang. So it's like, she's hilarious. I'm like, I'm your valet, basically. I Can I get you Sorry, anything? Trixie. Totally, Sorry. totally. So yeah, I have a dog, and no, I don't see any difference. Like, I look at Jennifer... Barrett's farm, you know, her, she's Jennifer Leifer on Instagram, but her name is Jennifer Barrett. And I look at her cows yeah. and I look at her goats and they are as sweet, as friendly, as quirky as my dog Trix Trixie. So I yes. don't see any difference. I, the only difference is that I know Trixie up close and personal. Yes. She sleeps in my bed and so I'm not sleeping sweet. with that cow or that chicken. And then I, I just spoke with, um, uh, Renee from Rowdy Girl yeah. the other day. Hey, she Renee. Did. Shout out to Renee at She's the Rowdy great. Girl Sanctuary in She's Texas. She's so great. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, my, you know, I forgot her name. She goes, the turkey just walked in. I was like, what do you mean? Your turkey just walked in your living room? She goes, yeah. She's everywhere. She goes everywhere. And I'm like, you got to send me a picture of that. And she did. And this turkey was like her pet. So. Yes, and he sits in her lap. It's I've seen it. It's wonderful. So cute. Yeah, it's so adorable. Yeah. But as you note, they have personalities, they have families, they have yeah. language and communication, they have a mm -hmm. range of emotions, mm -hmm. they can express intention, they understand grief, they certainly feel pain. You would have to be dead on the inside, really, to not notice it. Yeah, totally. totally. I don't know how you could avoid it. Uh, okay, do you have a favorite phrase that you live by? So let's say you're um, having a bad day or something you need to get through, what is it? Progress, not perfection. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. always say, nose to the grindstone, eyes to the sky. Oh, nice. But nice. I like, yeah, progress, yeah. not perfection. Right. Anything we can do. And mm -hmm. I say this to everybody because people are always asking me, like, I'm not sure I could do it. And I always say, okay, that's yeah. fine, too. Then yeah. just try. And mm -hmm. if you do, great. And yeah. if you have a setback, oh, well, then you'll, mm -hmm. like everything else in your mm -hmm. life, you'll get up and try again. Because exactly. that's what we do. That's all day what we long. do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, I think... 
I think we've probably determined this, but maybe not. Do you have a sense of purpose? And if so, uh, what yeah. is that? <clears throat> and also sort of part two of that question is, what would you like to be known for? Mm. Well, I'd like to be known for kindness. Nice. You know, it's plain and simple. And um, I, uh, wait, what was the other question? Um, do you have a sense of oh, purpose? Oh, a sense of purpose, absolutely. So I think if I had a mission, it would be to help transition the world to more humane protein. And that's mm -hmm. my, uh, humane obviously means plant-based mm -hmm. or clean meat. And that's my purpose. I mean, anything I can do to be part of this movement with, along with all the other voices and efforts and activists, I, I want to live my life knowing that I'm propelling this mission of transitioning away from animal food toward plant food. And I can't think of a better way to live. Thank you for doing that. And you have already done so much mm. in that area. So mm. again, I think if you were one of the early mainstream people reaching mainstream, mm. ma early people reaching mainstream America mm. about a kinder diet and the benefits therein for the planet, mm. for ourselves, for our conscious, mm -hmm. for our bodies, and of course for animals. So oh, thank, thank you. you for doing that. Thank you. And my last question, we've been kind of talking about this, but mm -hmm. not directly. What are your predictions for the future? And that's kind of vague. It could be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That could be 10 years from now. It could mm -hmm. be plant-based or it could be just something else. Mm -hmm. I believe there could be a black swan event, which means it's something um, unexpected coming yes. out of nowhere, like no one could have predicted it. And I don't know if that is a bird flu or some oh. sort of virus oh. or some something some sort of mass crop failure with uh, climate change. But I think there's going to be a big bump, a big bump up to plant-based food and away from animal ag. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know when that's coming. I, I, would, I would imagine within the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe or I'm going to see a vegan world in my lifetime, but I do see something like a big leap. Mm -hmm. I'll add to that. So I had an off the record conversation with Cargill. Mm -hmm. I just, I was in Bhutan hiking and the guy next to me on the trail was oh, wow. an American working in, uh, at Cargill in Thailand and we were hiking together, uh, accidentally. And so I asked him about all this stuff. Mm -hmm. His job is to make chicken factories more efficient. So mm. it's very, it's, mm. you know, but I tried to sort of keep my cool and just say like, what do you think about that? Mm -hmm. like, uh, and he said, well, our big focus for Cargill is plant-based investing. We think the world is going to change to plant-based very quickly. It's not the only thing they're doing. They're mm -hmm. a business. They're hedging their bets. So mm -hmm. they're they're pushing for chicken, which they mm -hmm. find to be efficient, which is god-awful for the chickens. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they're investing heavily in plant-based. They now see themselves as a company that can help others t transition to plant-based. Mm -hmm. And they think the world is going to turn very quickly and they yeah. want to be ready. So they've been doing the invest investment Awesome. basis for awesome. so that they're ready when the world <clears throat> turns so i think we're going to see it mm -hmm. in our lifetime for sure mm -hmm. i don't know if we'll see 100 percent vegan world but i think if you include clean meat in mm -hmm. that and we haven't even talked about that so clean meat mm -hmm. that means cells that are grown in a lab so mm -hmm. there's no factories nothing that takes the space or the water mm -hmm. or greenhouse gases it's still meat but there's no suffering involved if you include that in our future mm -hmm. and you count that as vegan, even though it's not vegan, but it's no animal slaughterhouses, I think vegan that could, adjacent. I, vegan adjacent. I like that. <laughs> I think that could happen in our lifetime. Yeah. And so the only meat you have is out yeah. of a, a I'll clean take lab. It. I will take it. I'll take I it. feel great about clean meat. Yeah. Uh, and that's a nice segue too. I feel great about your book. So Clean uh, Protein with Bruce Friedrich. Please, everybody, get that. I serve. Oh, shout out to Bruce. And then I'll just. Look how pretty Kathy is. Like, oh. Obviously, you can see that, but look how pretty she is. This is her book. Oh my thank God. You, thank Veganish, you. Veganist and the book of Veganish, which basically says do your best. And Don't. it's for younger people too. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And shout out to millennials who are getting us over the hump. Yeah. One in four millennials is plant based, yeah. considers them plant based. Amazing. Yeah, really wonderful. And a Nielsen report just came out saying that while only 3% of the U.S. considers themselves vegan, 6% considers themselves vegetarian, 
39% of people, according to a Nielsen study, say that they are now trying to work in more plant-based options. Love it. So we're getting there. We are getting there. And of course, we're getting there because of the help of Kathy Freston. All of us so, in it yes. together. All yes. of us. Yeah. How do you want people to find you? Or you Oh, Kathy Freston on Instagram. Okay. A K and an F. And uh, yeah, that's where I kind of live on okay. Instagram. That's awesome. And mm -hmm. then, of course, her books can be found on Amazon. So don't be shy. Amazon.com. You can find Kathy Freston's books. I want to thank everybody for being here. And really, thank you for all you do. Thank you for caring. Thank you for spreading the word. Thank you for cooking. Thank you for just being your wonderful, brilliant selves, like she said, and just setting a good example. Thank you for caring about animals. And until I see you again, thank you for being vegan. Bye, everybody.